This video is about calculating population growth. And uh, before we get into like how you actually do this, we should talk for a minute about why this is important. It's very important for ecologists to understand what populations are growing and which populations are declining. This can help them identify problems in an area. So for example, if they're looking at uh, species of toads and their populations declining, that means that they're threatened, you know, quite possibly threatened by changes that are happening in the environment. And then we can take precautions in order to prevent that change from eventually causing like a catastrophic change in the population. Like if they if too many of them die off and then the population then maybe becomes endangered or even extinct. So something to keep in mind when it comes to calculating population growth is that not all populations are growing, which means some population growth formulas might give you a negative answer, which is fine. All a negative answer means is that the population is shrinking, that it happens to be getting smaller. If uh, you get a positive answer, then the population is in fact growing. So the first thing we have to think about is what adds to a population. There are two things that will cause a population to increase. So if something's adding to a population, uh, one of the most obvious things are births. So those are new individuals being introduced into the population. The other one, which you may not have heard of, is the idea of immigration. So we often think about this as like people coming to the United States, you know, the idea of like immigrants like coming in through Ellis Island or something like that. Uh, in this case, though, immigration will apply to anything. It'll apply to species living in a forest. Say you have... Um, for example, like a species of squirrels, and you have a new group that's been introduced, which you might think like, well, gosh, you know, when would that ever happen? When would you have squirrels immigrating? Uh, you know, when I was growing up, we used to have squirrels that, that would chew on a part of my dad's roof, and we would capture them, and we'd actually take them uh, in these little traps, you know, these little uh, like metal traps that he would get to, to catch them, and we would take them and release them in a park, you know, a few miles from my house. And, you know, that's an example of an immigrating population. You know, that squirrel, like it or not, got moved from one place to another. Uh, so this can happen due to people. It can also happen naturally. Say if a species runs out of resources in a given area, it might move to a new location in order to get the resources that it needs. So immigration can be sort of forced or it can be natural. Uh, there are some things that subtract from a population. So obviously the opposite of births, we could have deaths in a population. And then the op opposite of immigration is emigration. So these are individuals that are then leaving that part of the population and they're going somewhere else. So that squirrel we were talking about, he was sort of forced to emigrate and, and leave and go to a new area. So what this ends up doing is it creates like almost a formula for us that we can follow in order to calculate how a population is growing or changing. So I'll show you that formula in a second, and then we'll do one of these example problems together. So what this formula ends up uh, breaking down with is uh, birth rate and immigration go together, because these are both things that are increasing the population. So when you're reading a problem, you're going to figure out the birth rate, and then figure out the immigration rate, and then you're going to add those two together. Then you're going to figure out the death rate from the problem and the emigration rate, excuse me, and add those two together. What that'll finally give you is the population growth once you subtract death rate and immigration from birth rate and immigration. Uh, it sounds kind of complicated when you look at it like this, but I'll show you a problem in a second and we'll work our way through it together. It's honestly not very difficult at all. When you're solving one of these problems, what I suggest you do is write out what I have here just to help you remember how to set this up. So the B stands for birth rate. We're going to add that to the immigration rate. We're going to subtract from both of those the death rate added together with the emigration rate. So I'll read through the problem with you and, and show you how to identify the different things that we're looking for as we read through it. So to start off, it says a population has a birth rate of 200 per thousand individuals. One of the keys to doing this is just writing down information as you find it. So instead of getting overwhelmed by like, reading the whole problem and there's all these numbers in here, just stick with what you're finding first. So we know that the birth rate is 200, and it's always going to tell you per how many. Uh, so this part's going to stay the same. You can see the next one is 100 per thousand individuals. So our birth rate is 200, so we're going to write that one down here uh, below the birth rate. So we've got 200 to start us off. And then it says a death rate of 100 per thousand individuals. 
So we'll record that one down. Death rate is 100. Uh, and then we come back up here to our problem. An immigration rate of 50 per 1,000. So immigration goes over here. And then the final one is our emigration, which is actually very low. The emigration rate is only 10 per 1,000 individuals. So that one goes down under here. So remember how we're setting this up. We're adding these two together. And then we're going to subtract them. So if we add those two together, we'd end up with 250 on this side, minus 110. So what we end up with then for our answer is 140. So we actually have a population growth rate of 140. The thing that's important is it's per thousand individuals. So the way that you'd end up writing this is uh, it would be like 140 slash 1,000. Oh, I can't squeeze that last zero in there. So hold on. Uh, we'd end up with this looking like is uh, is almost like a fraction. So I guess if you want to think of it that way, this will allow me to fit everything in there. 140 per 1,000 individuals. Uh, the reason you have to know the the group is um, basically to give us uh, a ratio. So we'll end up with this fraction, and um, this is what ecologists end up using in order to figure out whether a population is growing or shrinking. So as I mentioned to you on the very first slide of this video, that you could either end up with a positive or a negative number here. In this case, since we have a positive number, we know that this population is getting bigger. If your number happened to be, say, negative 50, don't think that your answer is wrong just because you got a negative. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That just happens to mean that the population is shrinking. So this example problem that I did is actually the first one that's on your handout. So you can copy this one over and it will give you a good little template or an example to follow as you go through and complete the rest of them. Uh, if you run into any problems while you're completing these, just ask me. I'll be more than happy to come by and give you a hand. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, good luck with the assignment.